Now at 6, new video of police officers opening fire on a passing car in South Los Angeles. The reason they pulled out their guns. A body found in the backyard of a home in Harbor Gateway. A woman under arrest. This is going to be, you know, a Mike Tyson punch to the Carolina coast. Hurricane Florence barrels toward the East Coast. The preparations tonight for a monster storm. Good evening. I'm Micah Ullman. And I'm Cher Calvin. Officials have told millions of people in the path of this fierce monster storm, don't wait, leave now. Florence is being called one of the most powerful storms to threaten the region in decades, expected to bring powerful winds, torrential rains, and a massive storm surge. Kareen Winter here now with the latest. Kareen. Micah, the governor of North Carolina says if you don't get out now, you're putting your life and the lives of first responders at risk. Florence may have lost steam, weakening to a Category 3 hurricane this evening, but it's still kicking up 83-foot waves in the Atlantic. While many residents heeded the warning to evacuate ahead of this powerful storm barreling toward the Carolina coast. I mean, I packed up everything as well as I could and got it all prepped up and boarded the windows. Some residents are taking their chances and staying put with their own preparations in place. We got uh, all the windows boarded up and got water, plenty of water, plenty of food, and uh, I mean, we're just really not worried. We've got a sturdy house and just faith in God that we're going to be here when it's all over. The mass exit triggered traffic congestion across impacted areas with the window for safe evacuations rapidly closing. Here in South Carolina, millions of residents packed the roadways where traffic officials transformed the interstate into a one-way street, forcing the public away from the hurricane zone. The governor of North Carolina also issued this stern warning. If you've been asked to evacuate, don't wait. Leave now. You put your life at risk by staying. This remarkable image from space captured the size of Florence that was reduced earlier today from a Category 4 to a Category 3 hurricane with sustained winds of 120 miles per hour, churning toward those coastal areas, a storm still strong enough to deliver a potentially disastrous blow. The governor of South Carolina also pointed out that they'll eventually pull emergency responders from those areas being threatened and that anyone who stays behind will be on their own. Mike and Cheryl, will send it back over to you. All right, Kareen, thank you. Meteorologist Vera Jimenez has been tracking the storm as it develops. Vera, what's the path looking like right now? Well, at this point, uh, it hasn't slowed down yet, but it is due to slow down as it reaches cooler waters. Right now, as you can see, it is still about 335 miles southeast of North Carolina and about 170 miles east southeast of South Carolina. Now, as we go ahead and take a look at the track, you can see that by this point now, it's just passing the Bahamas and Bermuda. Bermuda. It is going to continue in a northwesterly direction. Now at this point it is moving at about 16 miles per hour, which is still at a pretty fast clip. We're hoping that it slows down significantly again as it continues to reach the coast. But as you heard Kareen just mentioned at this point, it is now a category three. It is packing 115 mile per hour winds with wind gusts to 150 miles per hour. By the time it reaches the coast, it is going to be right around the border of North and South South Carolina. If you happen to be in uh, North Carolina, you could see isolated areas of about 40 inches of rain in South Carolina. They're not going to get quite as much, but they're still looking at isolated uh, areas of maybe 20 inches of rain. So it is going to be a very dangerous situation for all the folks there. Uh, and again, we just continue to hope that it slows down. At some point, they think that it may actually stall. And if that's the case, that is going to present another problem because again, when a system stalls out, that means it's it just stays and it just dumps and dumps and dumps rain. Not only that, but then you have the storm surge and all of the problems that come with that. In the meantime, back here at home, it's been all about the marine layer for us. Once again, it's developing tonight into tomorrow. Temperatures once again today, like yesterday over downtown, we're slightly below average. Yesterday, we finished off the day at 82. This afternoon, the sea breeze was just a little bit stronger, enough to bring our uh, down our downtown high to 81 degrees, which is actually cooler than it was yesterday. We are going to see a slow incline as we make our way towards the weekend, but it is going to be very minimal in terms of a warm up. Let's go ahead and send it back to you guys and we'll take a look at that extended forecast in a minute. All right, Vera, thank you. Elsewhere here at six, a man's body has been found in the backyard of a home in Harbor Gateway. A woman who may have been trying to get rid of that body is now under arrest. KTLA's Elizabeth Espinosa joins us live with details. Elizabeth. 
It was a disturbing discovery. Micah, share everybody good evening. In fact, the body is still on scene. Take a look. The yellow tape is still up. They have a perimeter here. Investigators are here. And the coroner just arrived. Now, tonight, LAPD confirmed this was a shooting death. The victim, only described as a white male at this hour, the female suspect, also white and in custody. Now, we spoke to a neighbor. His name is Troy, and he says he doesn't want us to show his face, but he knows a little bit of what has happened here. And a lady came up and said they killed my friend. From Sky 5, we could see the man's decomposing body wrapped in black plastic bags lying on a dolly. Nearby, there is a large hole in the backyard. There is a couple of witnesses that at least alerted us to what was going on here. And as a result, we responded. Those interviews of those individuals are being conducted at this time. LAPD says the woman detained in connection with this suspicious death initially barricaded herself this morning. The 911 phone call came in at about 9.52 a.m. So the officers out front, you have one minute to comply. The home is located in the 800 block of 173rd place in the Harbor Gateway area. LAPD set up a perimeter and eventually the woman surrendered. We captured on tape the moment she walked outside the house and then onto the street, then dropped face down to the ground. LAPD officers wearing tactical gear took her into custody. Shocking. According to one resident, the female who was detained could be someone the homeowner possibly rented a room to off Craigslist. You say he used to work on his car? Work on cars. That's Is his name Royce? I'm not sure what his okay. name is. Did he live by himself? I think it was his mother or girlfriend or something. I know it was a man and a woman. And back here live, LAPD, again, still on scene, interviewing witnesses. They say they have a number of people to talk to. And forensic investigators, we've seen them all day coming in and out of that home, collecting as much evidence as possible. And, of course, if the public, if anyone knows any information, please reach out to LAPD. That is the very latest reporting live. I'm Elizabeth Espinosa, KTLA 5 News. Mike and Cher, back to you. Elizabeth, thank you. New here at 6, the L.A. County District Attorney has charged a Long Beach man with murder after police say he struck and killed a pedestrian after the two men got into an argument. 29-year-old Sockhorn Whore has pleaded not guilty. Authorities say he deliberately ran over Victor Herrera, a father of seven, and then left the scene. It happened as the victim's children watched in horror. Police later spotted what appeared to be a drunk driver, but he refused to pull over. He took off and crashed into a parked car. Officers realized he was the suspected hit and run driver and arrested him. If convicted, Hoare faces a maximum sentence of 25 years to life in state prison. Two LAPD officers conducting a traffic stop when they hear gunfire and think someone is firing at them from a passing car. It turns out people in two passing cars were shooting at each other, not the officers. Newly released video captured the incident on July 29th in South L.A. Investigators say one of the men who opened fire had just carjacked a pregnant woman and she was in the passenger seat. The officers returned fire as one of the vehicles passed them, but they don't believe the driver was hit. The driver abandoned the vehicle a short time later and ran away. He remains on the loose. New details in the search for a hit and run driver who struck a motorized scooter in Silver Lake. One of the two victims hit in that crash has died. The man who died is a 35 year old father of two. Police say a gray 2010 BMW 5 Series rear ended the scooter at the intersection of Glendale Boulevard and Waverly Drive on September 4th. After dragging the scooter for about a block, the driver sped away. He is described as a heavy set man in his 30s with a dark colored beard. A $50,000 award is being offered for information leading to his arrest and conviction. Another big shakeup at CBS. The executive producer of 60 Minutes is out after being accused of inappropriate conduct. CBS News president David Rhodes sent a memo to staffers this morning about Jeff Fager and his departure. According to Rhodes, the move is not directly related to the allegations ma made against Fager. In the memo, all Rhodes would say is that Fager violated company policy. The New Yorker reported the claims include unwanted touching. 
Fager staunchly denies those allegations. A popular location for taking selfies in West Hollywood has been vandalized. Someone spray painted profanity on the pink wall outside the Paul Smith store on Melrose. The graffiti appears to be signed by a local anonymous street artist known for his billboard takeovers. But tonight that wall has been cleaned up and is pink once again for its next close up. Still ahead, a pharmaceutical executive defends rising drug prices. Why he says he had a moral requirement to do so. A dramatic rescue caught on camera. The reason crews had to turn back in dangerous floodwaters and how they saved the teen. And vaping among young people declared an epidemic. The action the FDA is taking to try to curb it. Plus, search a certain hashtag on Instagram and a warning pops up. The help the social media company is trying to give to save lives. Terrifying, terrifying moments for a Texas teen nearly swept away by raging floodwaters. A city employee heard the boy yelling for help. He had been hanging on a branch for nearly an hour. Rescue crews from the San Antonio Fire Department first tried wading into the water, but it was too rough and they had to turn back. Instead, they performed a swift water rescue using a boat to get, the, get to the boy. He's reportedly doing fine. In tonight's Health Smart, the Food and Drug Administration is taking action against teen vaping, calling it a youth e-cigarette epidemic. The agency has sent 1,100 warning letters to stores for selling e-cigarettes to minors, and more than 100 stores have been fined for continuing to violate the restrictions on sales to customers under the age of 18. FDA officials say the crackdown is the largest coordinated enforcement effort in the FDA's history. The percentage of baby boomers using cannabis has doubled over the past decade. According to researchers in New York, 9% of adults aged 50 to 64 and nearly 3% of those over 65 have used marijuana within the past year. While marijuana use is increasing among older Americans, researchers say most are not first-time users. Around a quarter of the users say a doctor had recommended cannabis to them. Instagram is offering a helping hand when it comes to opioid addiction. The social media app just announced a new feature that will offer help to users who search for opioid-related hashtags. Every time a user types in the hashtags, a pop-up will appear offering ways to get support. The user can choose to see treatment options and find more information on substance abuse. The new feature is now available. Vera is here, very busy this afternoon, watching Florence, of course, off the eastern seaboard and here at home. Indeed, uh, that storm surge, the rain, it's, yeah. it's, and it's a, it's a big, it's a big mm -hmm. monster, and it's still so well defined when you look at those satellite images. It's, uh, it's pretty scary stuff, but yes, it is uh, heading to the coast uh, here. The only thing heading to our coast is the marine layer, thank goodness. Uh, that will be back again tomorrow, and that means that once again we are going to see relatively mild temperatures. The pattern has been kind of stagnant, and that's just because that big trough of low pressure hasn't really moved around a lot. And so because it's a little bit stronger than the ridge of high pressure and it's not really budging, we're not seeing any big fluctuations or changes in our weather pattern. We were expecting it to start warming up by tomorrow, but now it looks like only a couple of places are going to warm up tomorrow. It's going to be a bit of a mixed bag and you'll see those numbers and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Right now, though, let's get to our weather photo. Oh no, we do have a weather photo, but we'll go ahead and put that into motion for you. Here's what it looks like. The sun's getting ready to set 81 degrees over downtown Los Angeles in case you missed the high earlier. Uh, again, a little bit below average, uh, but that is okay. We don't mind that because, you know, it's still going to be a little bit warm, especially as, you know, we head into the fall. We'll get those surprise days of, you know, triple digit temperatures.
temperatures. Uh, the weather photo is coming up very quickly. I'm just having a little bit of a slow down here. Uh, we did see plenty of sunshine earlier today, even though the coast woke up a little bit gray. Again, we had really quick morning clearing, and so that was really nice. Uh, and then it ended up looking like this. And as Timothy Mason said, look, it's the marine layer. It's clearing and retreating back of the Pacific where it belongs. Uh, this happened to be the Newport Bay Jetty. So there you go. Beautiful clearing marine layer. Remember that you can send me your weather photos either on Instagram or you can also send them to me via Facebook. Right now, it's 72 degrees over LAX. That's Los Angeles International, in case you're new to town. Uh, Oxnard, 68, 74 in Santa Ana, and 82 in Riverside. Here's a look at that satellite radar picture, and there it is. That trough has been there most of the week. It has only shifted a little bit in and out, but that's really about the extent of it. That ridge of high pressure really won't begin to expand and really move towards us until Friday and Saturday, and that's when you'll start to see those numbers increase a little bit. Tomorrow's going to be a little bit warmer, but mostly for our southern southern end of our viewing area. So those communities are going to see a bit of a change. Tomorrow, here's what it's going to look like. Again, the marine layer will make it into the coast and the coastal basin. By about mid-morning, it will begin to retreat back of the Pacific, and then it is going to clear away completely. 55 degrees overnight in Corona, 64 in Laguna Beach, 59 if you happen to be in Yorba Linda, 61 in Pomona, 63 in Santa Clarita, and the Antelope Valley will also be in the upper 50s and low 60s. Tomorrow, 90 degrees in New Hall. Uh, Antelope Valley is going to be a little bit cool compared to, like, let's say some of our beach areas because, again, where the position of the trough of low pressure is, the onshore flow is going to impact the northern end of our viewing area much more significantly than it will the southern area. So if you happen to be in, let's say, Orange County, even South L.A., uh, and even parts of uh, Riverside County, parts of the southern end of San Bernardino County will also be a little bit warm. And again, it's just because that onshore floor will not have as great of an impact. 90 degrees tomorrow in Corona. We will begin that extended forecast in the San Fernando and the San Gabriel Valley. Tomorrow, you're still going to see some morning clouds in both communities. Uh, and then take a look at Friday. Finally, 91 and 90 on Saturday and still looking at maybe 89, 90 degrees on Sunday. For the coastal basin, we're looking at low 80s tomorrow. So back to average on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and even on Monday. And then the onshore flow returns again on Tuesday for you. And that will cool you down for Orange County. Friday and Saturday will be the warmest days. And then for Riverside and San Bernardino counties, we're looking at gusty afternoon winds tomorrow and again on Friday. Temperatures on Friday peaking at 95 and then a little bit cooler on Saturday and Sunday and even on Monday. But overall, not bad at all. Mm. Not bad at all. All right, Vera, thank you so much. Coming up next, would-be thieves get a nasty surprise? A man uses an unusual weapon to fight them off as they try to rob a marijuana dispensary. And more fallout after Serena Williams loses at the U.S. Open. The action the umpires are now considering because of her reaction. Surveillance video of a pot shop near Toronto, Canada, as four would-be robbers entered the store and pulled out bear mace to try and subdue the workers. But the manager wasn't having it. He grabbed a large water pipe, commonly known as a bong, then went after them, hitting one of them and shattering that glass. The manager eventually scared off all the would-be thieves. He and his small dog were treated for exposure to that mace. A pharmaceutical executive is defending his statement that it's a moral requirement to make money when you can. The comment came after his company, Nostrum Pharmaceuticals, raised the price of an antibiotic by 400 percent. Nostrum recently raised the price of the antibiotic from $500 a bottle to more than $2,300. The World, the World Health Organization lists the drug as essential medicine for lower urinary tract infe infections. The commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration blasted the drug executive's comment, tweeting, the FDA will promote competition so those with no regard to public health consequences can't take advantage of patients who need medicine. Serena Williams' angry confrontation with an umpire during the U.S. Open final may be spurring talk of a union for the umps. Umpire Carlos Ramos sanctioned and penalized Williams for three code violations. 
In turn, she accused him of sexism and received immediate support from other players as well as both the Women's Tennis Association and the U.S. Tennis Association. But it was two days before the International Tennis Federation came to Ramos's defense, leaving many umpires feeling they have no backing for doing their job. That's it for the News at 6. Here's Micah with a look at what's ahead. Micah? Chair, thank you. The KTLA News at 6.30 is just ahead. A deadly end to a police chase in Santa Ana. The latest on the investigation in a live report coming up. Plus, he was already found guilty once. Now President Trump's former campaign manager may want a plea deal. Why Paul Manafort may want to avoid a second trial. And are you ready for an upgrade? Apple unveils several new products that it promises will make history. Everyone else is signing off. We are just getting started with LA's only local news at 6.30 on the other side.